Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to take a look at some interesting rules when we mix scalar products and vector products together. For example, what if we have A dot B cross C, that's one way to say it, or the scalar product between the vector A and the cross product of B and C. It turns out there's some very interesting rule that this is equal to the scalar product of B dot C cross A, and this is also equal to the scalar product of C times um, A cross B. Think about it kind of like in a round robin way. If you take the A and put it in the back and take the B and put it out here, you get this. If you then take the C, put it out here and roll the B over to the back side, you get this. So you can kind of round robin through that and all those are equivalent to one another, which is very interesting and very handy in some cases. Also, if you want to calculate what this is equal to, this can become equal to the matrix of a sub x, b sub x, oop, I'll take that back. That's a sub x, a sub y, and a sub z, b sub x, b sub y, b sub z, and c sub x, c sub y, and c sub z. And if you work this out, you get the following. You get a sub x times b sub y times c sub z, b sub y, times c sub z minus b sub z c sub y b sub z c sub y and they get minus a sub y times b sub x times c sub z because then you multiply this times this minus this times this so minus b sub z c sub x and then plus we get a sub z and again if you cross out this column this uh, row you get these four elements left so you get b sub x c sub y minus b sub y c sub x and that will be the result of doing a dot b cross c and it doesn't matter what order these are in you will always get the same results it's really interesting those are some handy rules to know when you deal with vector products and when you deal with scalar products at the same time and that's how it's done